in a restaurant in public where like no one wants to see that. I mean I get that's annoying but that's a law is kind of dumb. To be fair though I haven't actually met many Russians. I've only met uh, a group of Russians once and they didn't smile so maybe it is true. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It is your favorite Midwest boy, Ethan. Today we're going to be looking at things you should never do in other countries. Based off the title, I'm going to assume that this video was made for Americans of mine, but those that aren't Americans that watch this video, you might still learn something about things you should not do when you travel. That is one thing I definitely think Americans, maybe other countries, but for sure Americans, don't consider is other cultures when we travel. I haven't traveled a whole lot, but I, the people I have talked to that do travel, that's one thing I never hardly hear them ever mention is the other country's culture or what you should not do in that said country. When traveling, it always seems like the very first things that you think of is where you're going to go, how long you're going to be, how much time you need to take off work, how much the trip's going to cost, what tourist things or attractions, destinations, places you want to see, uh, food, cars, if you need to, if there's good public transportation, if you need to rent a car right there. The one thing I hardly ever hear anyone talk about though is other countries cultures this video should be really interesting i'm looking forward to learning about this especially with the hopes that i am hoping to travel a lot more in the next few years we will see with that being said guys any one of you that live in a tourist area or work in the tourist industry comment below share the craziest thing that you've seen or heard a tourist do in your country or your place before we get in the video guys make sure that you like share and subscribe if you're new also with that being said if you guys want to interact more with one another from the people of this channel there is a Discord. The link will be in the description below. Go check that out. With that being said, guys, let's get into this video and learn about things not to do in other countries. Traveling opens up your worldview, but different cultures around the world are so varied that just doing your thing in foreign countries may get you <laughs> into a world of difficulty. Let's take a look at 20 surprising things you should never do in other countries. Amazing. Number 20. Don't step on money in Thailand. In Thailand, it's illegal to step on money. It's because of one man on every note, the king. The law states uh. anything considered demeaning to the royal family can be an offense. That means if you drop your bot at the market, you won't be able to stand on it to stop it from blowing away. The Thai government also has a lot of power. During a recent military coup, the three finger Hunger Games salute became popular with protesters. In the end, they made the gesture illegal, and five people were even arrested for doing it. There are lots more customs you should follow should you visit Thailand. For one, it's never good to shout or make a scene in Southeast Asia. You should also avoid putting up your feet, because according to Buddhist beliefs, feet are the dirtiest parts of the body, and it's very offensive to point them at someone. Also, think of the smell. Ugh. Number 19. I've heard of not exposing your feet. I actually have heard of that one. I didn't know, I didn't remember it was from Thailand. There's probably other countries that are very similar. But yeah, the money thing it would just suck if you did drop all your money and you can't step on Like, if no one's watching, do you just go ahead and step on it? Or do you, like, is it such a strict rule there that, like, you don't even risk it? Don't use your left hand in India. You never think about what hand you use for what, but in India, you need to. Never pass money food or shake with your left hand. Your left hand is used for all things bathroom related. So it's very easy to see where this comes from. In India, you should also get ready for another custom, queue jumping. As queues oh. are a Western construct, it's jump or be jumped in the wildly long lines of India. Number 18, don't order. I actually have heard of not using your left hand, but to be fair, most of your greetings and everything are done with the right anyway. So, I don't know. I'm right-handed. I never use my left hand for anything, but I guess if you're left-handed, uh, then it sucks. Order white coffee after breakfast in Italy. Italians are known for coffee, and they have many rules about it. Mm, that looks so it's good. It's form to order a white coffee, such as a cappuccino, after breakfast. This comes not from the sweetness of the drink, but from the milk. According to Italians, milk should never be drunk after a meal, as it is said to ruin your digestion so you should only have it at breakfast. If you're a beachgoer, you should also beware. In Eraclea, near Venice, it's illegal to build sandcastles. What? According to the local government, they obstruct the passage of the beach and sand dunes for other people. Talk about the fun police. 
Yeah, that would and suck. Here's a weird one. In Torino, readjusting your crotch in public is an offense. Even though touching that part of your body is traditionally associated with good luck, courts are beginning to rule that it goes against common decency. We're not talking about one or two gestures, but a lot of crotch pawing. In fact, one man was convicted in 2006 for ostentatiously touching his genitals through his clothing. <laughs> Keep your hands oh, where we can see them. Number 17. That kind of makes sense, because I know I've seen sometimes like in public people just really going at it and it's kind of awkward, so. No high heels in Greece. High heeled shoes have been banned at Greece's oldest monuments due to damage caused by tourists. Oh, that's just at the monuments, Leave though. Leave them at home. That's Besides, not, that's misleading. Don't you want to be comfy when you're walking over the old rocks? Greeks also have an intolerance to mooning, the practice of burying your naked ass in public as well. And if you insist on this asinine behavior, you could end up with a hefty fine. So mooning on the Acropolis while wearing stilettos? <laughs> You've got yourself a double whammy. Or at least a I mean, yeah, people shouldn't just be walking around with their ass hanging out. Number 16. Don't tip in Japan. Oh, I, I this heard next this one. one. might be hard to get your head around, but you shouldn't tip in Japan. The service may be exceptional, but Japanese people consider this standard to be typical. So offering a gratuity is not necessary. Okay, you won't necessarily offend someone's sensibilities if you tip, but you should definitely avoid pointing. It's rude to point at someone in Japan, as this is a gesture that is usually directed towards objects rather than people. And while on the subject of Japan, although it's not illegal to engage in PDA on the streets, it is a faux pas to kiss amorously in public or hug for too long. So save those long goodbye kisses for the hotel room. Number 15. Yeah, I heard about the tipping in Japan. Like you're not supposed to tip. Which obviously, again, if you're an American and you're traveling there and you don't realize that, you're like, I thought it was offensive actually. That's just one of those things, like if you don't know it, an American, like we would always tip because we would tip all our people over here, as you guys know. So that's just one of those very different culture things. Teen. Watch your hand gestures in Turkey. Often, hand gestures are a great way of bridging the language barrier. But just like all language, sometimes they can get mistranslated. In Turkey, you should not give the OK sign. To do so implies you think the other person is a homosexual. But you should also watch where you drink your liquor. It has been made illegal to drink or be drunk in public in the province of Burdur. I think that's illegal in a lot of places. can get you a 100 lira fine. If that wasn't enough, you should never use a toothpick without covering your mouth, and you should avoid blowing your nose in public, as both of these are considered very impolite. Try dabbing at it instead. Number 14. Yeah, the toothpick thing kind of makes sense. Like, if you just, you don't want, like, who wants to watch someone, like, pick their teeth, especially, like, in a restaurant, in public, where, like, no one wants to see that. So, either just go to a bathroom or, yeah, cover up your hand. That makes great sense. You can't buy chewing gum in Singapore. Despite what's claimed, it's not illegal to chew chewing gum in Singapore. Just can't buy it. Even after a 1992 law passed, which was designed to counter the amount of chewing gum being dropped in public places, the treat was not altogether outlawed. Instead, buying and selling it is illegal and punishable with a fine of up to $1,000. The Control of Manufacture Act still allows tourists to bring two packs into the country. Oh, so tourists can bring it. Make it count. But if you're looking for another food stuff to enjoy when in Singapore, you should know that you're also not allowed to take the pungent tropical fruit durian on public transport. Bringing the fruit, which tastes like heaven, smells like hell on a bus or train, <laughs> carries a fine of up to $5,000. This I've never heard of that. Spaces for... means you are also not allowed to feed pigeons. This avoids population growth and reduces the amount of poop to clean. Two men, a 62-year-old and a 68-year-old, were fined $400 and $1,500 respectively for breaking this law this year. Number 13, don't pee in the ocean in Portugal. Hot competition for the <laughs> hardest law to enforce. It's not very polite to pee in a pool. But what about the ocean? Surely it's the definition of a victimless crime. But nonetheless, Portugal has recently outlawed it. That means any swimmers caught short will have to come out and find a bathroom. I don't envy the person who has to catch you doing this one. Number 12. I don't get how that could get enforced because you're already, you're soaking wet, you're in water. But yeah, obviously you shouldn't be peeing in any water 
any body of water where people can, might, might be getting in or drinking out of, obviously. Don't feed the pigeons in San Francisco. It may seem fun to feed the pigeons, but doing so in San Francisco can get you in trouble. It's illegal. The law is aimed to curb their population, as well as the health hazard presented by their poop. Yeah, I think, I think pigeons cause a lot of problems in cities. Specifically for tips about illicit crumb droppers. Speaking of tips, in America, in general, gratuities are everything. The average waiter makes between five to $12 an hour, and they need any extra money they can get. So unlike Japan, this is one place you should definitely tip. You should also make sure to mind your P's and Q's, where politeness is the main order of the day. In certain states, they pride themselves on good manners as a way of life. Customs like Minnesota Nice, made famous by the film Fargo, mm. are defined by polite friendliness, an aversion to confrontation, and a disinclination to make a fuss. So be nice, even if you don't mean it. And finally, I mean, I've seen a lot of arguments and fights and stuff, so I don't know why America has that stereotype that everyone's nice, because it's not true. I guess if you're a foreigner, people are overly nice to them. And there's just, there are some areas where people are just super, super nice. But yeah, there's, there's definitely, I mean, everyone's, people are still human, like, there's still fights and arguments in public. Finally, cutting down a saguaro cactus in Arizona is a federal crime. That's Even if it's on your property, doing any damage to this majestic plant is punishable with 25 years in prison which is comparable to the amount of time you do for an actual murder. This is because they take almost 200 years to fully mature, almost as long as the United States has been in existence. And how would you like it if someone cut you down in your prime? <laughs> Number 11. I was gonna say it was probably because of it's endangered, um, or, or because it takes so long to grow, you can't just have everyone go chop them down because they won't grow fast enough. No camouflage in the Caribbean. The Caribbean islands, including Barbados, Jamaica, Grenada, Dominica, St. Lucia, and St. Vincent, have banned civilians from wearing camouflage patterns. That's right, they're policing what you wear. As in, this is literally what their police force wear. So if you want to avoid a fine or jail time for impersonating an officer, leave the camouflage at home. But how will they spot you? Huh? <laughs> huh? That's one thing in the U.S., uh, a lot of people wear camouflage, especially during hunting season, but it's not the same camouflage as what the military does. You can still easily spot the difference between someone in the army as opposed to someone just out hunting. Obviously, it's not the same. Now, there is the old military stuff that a lot of a surplus st stores sell. Some hunters do buy that, and then it, it's a little awkward seeing it in public. But there's definitely a big difference between the military, the modern military camouflage and the old, the old and the hunting stuff. Number 10. No bikinis in Barcelona. It's probably a modest on thing. on holiday in Spain, you probably want nothing more than to roll off of the beach after a long day of sunbathing and to go and have a few cervezas at a local taverna. But in Barcelona, you'll have to swing by your hotel to change your clothes because the city has banned people from wearing bikinis when not on the beach. Oh, so. The rule, which has been made to supposedly protect modesty, comes with a $650 on-the-spot fine. You may love your beach body, but you'll have to put it away unless you want to get into trouble. Number nine. So yeah, I guess I kind of understand that for modesty reasons. Like I thought they were saying that you couldn't wear on the beach. You still can, just not traveling through the city. Obviously, a woman should be able to wear whatever she wants anywhere. But tight fitting trunks only in France. Only men going to the beach in France also have modesty concerns when it comes to swimwear. But rather being made to cover up, all men swimming in public have to instead wear tight-fitting swimming trunks. Why? <laughs> the law from 1903 relates to hygiene. The theory is you won't be wearing those budgie smugglers around town. So they are likely to be completely clean when you put them on for your dip. Number eight, don't spend your pennies in Canada. Ever seen someone counting out pennies to pay for their entire week's shop at a grocery store? It's Not so annoying when that happens. In fact, it's illegal to pay for something worth 25 cents or more using single cent coins. The Currency Act of 1985 also renders your payment void if you pay for something worth $5 or more using five cent pieces, as this breaks the limitations of what is considered legal tender. <laughs> also, despite the similarities, it's generally not a good idea to compare Canadians to their American neighbors, 
Not only do they not like the association, Canadians pride themselves on making fun of their southern counterparts. Number seven, no. I don't know if that's true, actually. All the Canadians I've met are super nice. I know that's their stereotype. But well, they really are. They're just super nice, and I've never heard them make fun of Americans at all. And I'm pretty sure, like, again, that's like one of those laws that probably is not enforced. I imagine if someone was at a supermarket and used pennies to buy something, they're not going to immediately stop and just call the police and have you arrested. That just seems... That, that law just seems asinine. I mean, I get that's annoying, but that's a law is kind of... No tobacco in Bhutan. Smokers of the world would be wise to avoid Bhutan. The strictest narcotics laws in the entire world... Yeah, I feel like a lot of countries are moving sale towards of tobacco is banned. trying to... Tobacco to use has been outlawed since the Supreme smoking Leader as much decreed as possible. it in 1729. But it wasn't until 2004 that the National Assembly of Bhutan banned the sale of tobacco nationwide. It's the first country... Which is really good because the second hand smoke... Free. I mean, that... Number six. It sucks being around finish your smoke. plate in China. When eating in certain regions of China, it's okay if your eyes are bigger than your stomach. It's sometimes considered rude to eat everything on your plate, as it indicates you have not been fed adequately enough. Try to leave a little food behind to show your total fulfillment. On the subject of food, contrary to urban legend, it's not customary to belch to show your satisfaction at the food. I've never heard that one. In the past, when food was <laughs> scarce, showing you were full to the point of burping was a sign of the host's wealth, but those days are gone. Why not instead try a thank you card? Number five, dress. I wonder if the China one is actually accurate. If someone's been to China or, or is from China, let me know in the comments below if that's true that you leave, purposely leave food behind. Dress modestly in the Middle East. In certain parts of the Middle East, be careful how you dress. Modesty is key in places like Iran and Saudi Arabia. Yeah, I know you they have some really, really strict laws when it comes to women. And women should keep their heads covered. Yeah. Also, drinking in certain countries, such as Jordan, should be kept to licensed bars unless you want a fine. In Saudi Arabia, Yemen, and Kuwait, it's entirely banned due to their strict religious laws. If visiting during Ramadan, you should be respectful. Muslims are not allowed to eat or drink during daylight hours during the holy month, so you should avoid eating in public. In some places, it's stricter than others. In the UAE, where laws are applied equally to Muslims and non-Muslims alike, eating, drinking, or encouraging it in public can land you with a 2,000 durham fine wow. or jail time. Another thing you should note is that Valentine- If it's so important that they don't eat, I have heard of Ramadan, I kind of heard about the food thing, but I didn't realize it was just uh, daylight hours. But if that's the case, why don't they just close down all restaurants and discur to discourage any form of eating during those hours? Valentine's Day is outlawed in Iran, as it represents a lot of aspects of decadent Western culture. But that hasn't stopped a lot of Iranians continuing to celebrate it anyway. True I mean, to be fair, Valentine's Day, I think, is kind of a silly before, holiday. But. Don't give even numbers of flowers in Russia. You can always say it with flowers. Except in Russia, where bad math can cause an upset. When picking out a bouquet for a special event, try to get an odd number of flowers. Even numbers of flowers are only given at funerals, while yellow flowers in general are associated with mourning. Hmm. So try to avoid... Yeah, is this one of those things? Is it actually event. true? Also, although it sounds weird, avoid smiling at people in Russia. And don't expect one to smile for a photo. Russians only smile when they have a reason to like when with a family member or during a special occasion. This can seem unfriendly, maybe downright unsettling, but at least you know. Say cheese, or, or don't. Number three. Okay, again, that sounds like one of those stereotypes that is not true. To be fair though, I haven't actually met many Russians. I've only met uh, a group of Russians once and they didn't smile, so maybe it is true. Three, no reincarnation in Tibet. Ever since the administration of Tibet was taken over by the People's Republic of China, they have enforced a very strange law. In the home of the Dalai Lama, it's illegal for people to be reincarnated without permission. The State okay. Religious Affairs Bureau Order No. 5 was passed in 2007 in order to manage and control the reincarnation of living Buddhas. While over 1,000 people have since been reincarnated officially, the government has used this to invalidate the claims of countless who have died and come back 
without first getting approval. Number two, don't hike naked in Switzerland. Intended to well, curb the growing enthusiasm <laughs> of those who love being close to nature. It looks super Swiss cool. Swiss authorities are allowed to fine people who hike naked. Lacking a law to counter public nudity, they instead charge people based on their public indecency law. One man was fined 100 Swiss francs for walking past a family picnic in his birthday suit. And Switzerland has seen an influx of many more naked hikers in recent years. Common decency aside, Why? surely there can't be anything less appealing than stripping down in the cold outdoors of the Alps. Number one, don't touch people's heads in Malaysia. Malaysia is the melting pot of Southeast Asia, a place where cultures, languages, and religions all mix together. Despite the variety, there are some general customs you will need to observe when there. Firstly, you should avoid touching people's heads, as it is considered the most sacred part of the body. Plus, it's also kind of patronizing. You should also avoid pointing, as this is considered poor manners, especially when done with your right hand. I want to know who's just going up and like touching people's faces. I, I, cause that's just rude. You just don't do that. Um, I mean, maybe like there was a bug or something and you slap, you know, swat someone's head. I could see maybe that. Yeah. Just going up randomly and touching someone's face. If you're a stranger, it would be super creepy. Even if you're not a stranger, it's still weird. Old wives tales imply that you shouldn't point at heavenly bodies like the moon in case your finger falls. Seems like a lot of countries and even don't like pointing. An animal may rile up its spirit and invite it to take I don't want to have an opinion one or the other. Instead, I, I was raised that it was rude to point at people. Point with your thumb, leaving your fingers tucked in. Pointing should only be used as a direct insult. Similarly, <laughs> pounding your fist into your hand shows exasperation and can be taken as insulting too. So, when traveling around the world, you'll see many amazing sights but you can easily offend if you're not wise to different people's cultures. Yeah, so definitely a lot of those were really random. It didn't seem like too many if you were a traveler, you'd probably get in too much trouble for. I feel like there's probably some leniency given, I would hope so. I'm gonna ask for those that travel, since I haven't traveled very much, for those that have traveled a lot, comment below and share your experience. Was there something when you went to a different country that you weren't expecting with the culture and it was either a culture shock or you got in trouble? with the police or the people of said country? Let me know below. It's definitely interesting to see all the different cultures and just kind of their different ways of thinking. At the same time, yeah, it's one thing like if we're tr if you're traveling, it probably would be a good idea to at least spend 20, 30 minutes just kind of looking up the culture and just what you should and should not do. Yeah, some of those you wouldn't think about, especially if you're a woman. I only say that because some of the rules with the swimwear, swimsuits and stuff, you could get in trouble for or in Middle Eastern countries, how you dress you could get in trouble for. I've actually, I have heard some stories of that happening to journalists and stuff that go to that country and they get in trouble for what they're wearing. With that being said, that was a very interesting video. Uh, I feel like there's probably way more per country of things that you should be aware of. Again, like in the future, if I start traveling, I will probably look up, spend at least a few hours kind of just getting to know the country's culture as opposed to just going there for the scenery or whatever I'm going there for. Anyway guys, let me know what you guys th thought of this video. If there was anything that you did not know about, comment below, uh, share your experiences if you've traveled. And with that being said guys, I think that's all I have. I just wanna say thank you guys for all the support you've given. I really do appreciate all of you. Please take care and be safe and I will see you guys all in the next video.